This is one of my favorite topics. We're going to define data lakes and data vault 2.1 architecture. And in this topic, we're going to dive into the different levels or layers. Now, don't think of these layers as physical. These are logical labels that apply to the different ways you categorize and organize all of your data sets. Now, we did get permission, and I need to say this, we did get permission to not only use this diagram in its entirety, but to modify it and use it for our own purposes within our training. The first thing here is to note is that everything's divided into zones. We use the term zones now for our architectural divisions, right? So we have this thing called transient zone where we have streams, files, and non-persistent data. And that's what we call the part of the data lake. And then we have a raw zone, which is managed file store, relational database included, um, if you're going to include your persistent stage area. Now, whether or not you choose to put uh, persistence in your relational stage area is up to you. Platforms have changed. Technology has come a long ways. Some technology handles compression, division, optimization, MPP, all that kind of stuff for you. Other traditional legacy platforms don't do that. So you still have to worry about fragmentation, for example, and performance of persistent data. So be very careful with how you choose and what you choose to apply as persistent data sets. Then we have the trusted zone. That's where your enterprise data warehouse goes, followed by the refined zone, where we get information marts and information delivery. So we're going to talk about each of these levels coming up. We're going to dive in and define each one of them. At the end of all of this, we have the consumer systems, right? And these include data catalogs, data prep tools, data visualization, sharing tools. Now, the data catalogs are more and more important. They help you tie metadata to all of these processes and everywhere that lineage flows, including uh, data governance, applying data governance. So very cool stuff. How does the medallion architecture fit, you ask? Well, quite simply, the bronze level fits over top the transient and the raw zone. The silver level fits over the trusted zone and the gold level fits over the refined zone. We're not going to get too deep into that. If you want to know more about the medallion architecture and data vault, head over to Databricks website. You can definitely check out some of their blog posts on the subject. Now, we have new levels for uh, the data lake or the lake zones that we like to use. So instead of the raw zone, um, we want to call it the landing zone. And why? Well, we know it's raw data, but, but it could also contain pre-processed data. In other words, raw data and pre-processed data. And when would you do that? Well, you probably would do that when you're dealing with uh, audio, image, video, and documents, because you have to pre-process all of those elements first, take them from the raw file, do something to them, extract features and interesting parts, assign metadata, and that's curated, right? So the metadata then, or whatever you discover, uh, is what's fed to the warehouse downstream. So that all happens in the landing zone. It's not necessarily raw data anymore. So we don't like to call it the raw zone. So that's our reasoning for changing the label. And then, of course, you call this the, the trusted zone. We prefer to call this the enterprise memory zone. So this is what we're going to call it, the enterprise data warehouse zone, enterprise memory zone, whatever works for you, right? And this is where we put our data vault. Now, I also want to say this. In 2.1 going forward, we like to say logical modeling is more important than physical. You might say to me, well, Dan, my enterprise memory zone or my data warehouse is physically built in Cassandra or MongoDB or, or Iceberg. I can't use hubs, links, and satellites at the physical level and keep performance running. You're absolutely right. And you shouldn't. So what do I do? Well, you model it logically in hubs, links, and sats in your logical model, right? by business concept and by business key, and we'll get into that later. And then you build it physically by collapsing or denormalizing the structures as you need to in order to meet the needs of performance of the platform. And then, of course, we change the label of refined zone to information delivery zone, and this is intentional. So we're going to talk about each of these as we go. Now, in terms of data vault modeling, what are we talking about? Sparsely built. There is a, there is a misperception out there in the, in the marketplace. Some people say, well, if I'm using Data Vault, I'm going to model my entire warehouse all in Data Vault model, hubs, links, and sets. No, that's not necessarily true. Some data models do better with JSON at a physical level. Some data models do better with XML at a physical level.
depends on the platform. Some are graph. The physical implementation is a graph database. Well, you're not going to use hubs, links, and sats in a graph database. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So from there, again, do your logical modeling and build your data vault in a sparse format. Only build it where it absolutely applies to bring together business concepts. Use it in conjunction with JSON data modeling or XML data modeling or document modeling, whatever you need. Use it together for the for the power of collaboration, right? So we're going to get more into what sparsely built for data vault modeling means as we get into the information delivery zone. Um, but in reality, you can walk away with this idea that physicalize the data model only when it's absolutely necessary. Keep the data vault modeling at the concept level or conceptual level, keep it at the logical level, and you will be better off in the future, right? It will future proof your environment. So what exactly is a transient zone? And this definition we pulled directly from the article, right? It is used to hold ephemeral data, such as temporary copies, streaming pools, or other short-lived data before being ingested. It truly is temporary. It is a design decision for you to, to figure out just how temporary that data should be, whether it lives for one minute, two hours, two days, 24 days, right? All of those kinds of things come back to the business use case. The landing zone, what we like to call a landing zone, this is our definition. Overall or logically, we call this a managed persistent staging area. Data is ingested and kept as close as possible to its original state. Perfect. If it's in JSON, leave it in JSON. If it's in COBOL, leave it in COBOL. If it's in EBCDIC, leave it in EBCDIC, right? Probably not. You probably want to take it out of EBCDIC and put it in ASCII format, CSV or something else. But uh, this is also the zone where sensitive data must be encrypted, tokenized or otherwise secured. And of course, it could be files or database tables. You could have one, the other, or both together. So let's drill into the landing zone a little bit before we move into the enterprise memory zone. Inside the landing zone, we have these different states of maturity. We have this thing called data dump. And data dump is just take all your data and dump it in a file store and call it a data lake. Well, it's not quite a data lake yet. It needs a little maturity. The next thing that we have is this thing called data swamp. So from data dump to data swamp, you're going to mature it. What's the maturity state? The maturity state is not integrated at all to loosely categorized. Still not necessarily integrated, but you've got tags or you've got categorizations, loose categorizations at the file level or maybe at the folder level, grouping things together at large groups. Then you move from a data swamp to a data junkyard and you add non-volatile. So you go from volatile to non-volatile and tagged. You start tagging things. So not only do you have categories, but you've got tagging. So you've introduced search capacities. Finally, to reach a landing zone maturity, you have all these other components. The data may be profiled or pre-processed in the case of image, audio, video, and document, like I mentioned. Um, you should have your metadata documented to be a true data lake, a usable data lake. Must be encrypted, may be encrypted. If it's PII, it must be encrypted. Um, it may be governed. I'm going to say it should be governed. It, it definitely should. And it may be lineage tracked. And of course, maybe delta driven. Maybe you're doing some delta work in the data lake or in the landing zone. Um, and maybe you're not, right? So ultimately, this landing zone is your data lake, right? Other terms that you might hear out there on the market include data stream, data pond, data ocean. So what exactly is enterprise memory zone? Enterprise memory zone is conceptually based. Again, each one of these zones are logical or conceptual in nature. They're not necessarily physical. You can't point at this database and say, well, that is my enterprise memory zone. Doesn't always make sense. Again, your enterprise memory zone or your enterprise data warehouse might reach backwards into the landing zone, into the curated images or the curated videos or the curated audio files or the curated documents, if those things have been pre-processed through AI or ML or image processing or so on and recognition, then part of your data warehouse lives there, right? So you can't necessarily draw this hard boundary anymore and say, oh, my data warehouse is in a relational database. Let's sing, you know, no, it doesn't work that way. So don't think that way. You've got to open your thinking to logical and conceptual. This is very, very important in the future of data warehousing and, and BI and analytics, right? So the enterprise memory zone is integrated by business keys, business concepts. The data itself 
in this enterprise memory zone is usually never altered. I'm going to say never altered by soft business rules, except in the cases of audio, image, video, and document. But even then, those things that pre-process those files aren't modifying the source data. They're pre-processing and extracting. They will produce new files. They will extract new information, produce new files. They will summarize, cleanse, adjust, align, produce new files in a stepwise process. Again, the data itself is never altered. So the source data is not altered to this point. That happens in the information delivery zone. In the information delivery zone, we find things like point in time and bridge tables. For those of you that are familiar with Data Vault 2, for those of you that are just getting started, you're going to learn what those are. But we'll find things like information marts, or as you might call them, data marts. Sparse, sparse business data vault. That's what the BDV means, sparse business data vault. So you're going to find a lot of information that's cleansed, transformed, and organized for optimal delivery, right? We Performance is, is utmost importance of getting data out into the BI tooling, into the hands of the users or the consumers in this zone. So that brings us to the end of this topic. See you in the next one.